Hello. In this lecture, I will continue to summarize the key points of trigonometry following the previous video. Law of sine. There is a triangle ABC and its circumscribed circle O. Suppose that the radius of this circle is R, and the triangle ABC has sides with lengths A, B, and C as pictured. Then each side's length divided by sine of each opposite angle is equal to 2R. To prove this, I will extend the line CO as pictured. Then let the point which meets the line and the circle A'. Let me also draw a line passing A' prime and B. Then we know that the angle A is equal to the angle A'. Prime. And the angle A' prime BC is a right angle. If you do not understand, check my previous video which is lecture 2. So the triangle A' prime BC is a right triangle, and its hypotenuse is 2R. In this case, we know that sine A' prime equals to A over 2R. So 2R is equal to A over sine A'. prime. But since the angle A equals to A', prime, 2R is equal to A over sine A. Similarly, B over sine B and C over sine C must be equal to 2R. The next is first law of cosine. Let me bring the triangle ABC which I used in the previous slide. According to the first law of cosine, a equals to b times cosine c plus c times cosine b, b equals to c times cosine a plus a times cosine c, and c equals to a times cosine b plus b times cosine a. To prove one of them, I will draw a line passing the vertex a and vertical to line bc. Let the point where the two lines meet as d, and let the length of line bd as m, and line CD as n, then we get a equals to n plus m. Meanwhile, n equals to b times cosine c and m equals to c times cosine b. So a, which is n plus m, is also equal to b times cosine c plus c times cosine b. Similarly, b equals to c times cosine a plus a times cosine c and c equals to a times cosine b plus b times cosine a. The next is second law of cosine. This is actually used more than first law of cosine. Its theorems are following. a square is equal to b square plus c square minus 2bc cosine a. b square is equal to c square plus a square minus 2ca cosine b. And c square is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab cosine c. The way of proof might be slightly different where the angle is acute or obtuse. I will show how to prove where an angle is acute. I will draw a same line passing A and perpendicular to line BC. Let me assume the length of line BD as M and the length of line AD as H. We can find that M is equal to C times cosine B and H square equals to C square minus M square then b square equals to a minus m square plus h square. By using these two to m and h square, the below equation changes to this. And by simplifying it, we get c square plus a square minus 2ca cosine b. Similarly, a square equals to b square plus c square minus 2bc cosine a, and c square equals to a square plus b square minus 2ab cosine c. Again, there will be slightly differences in the process of proof for obtuse angles. Trigonometric function. On xy plane, a circle with radius r and centered at origin is equal to x square plus y square equals to r square. Then the coordinates of a point P on the circle as pictured could be expressed as following. Where theta is the angle between positive x-axis and the line from origin to P. From this, we can get x equals to r cosine theta or cosine theta equals to x over r. And y equals to r sine theta or sine theta equals to y over r. The slope of the line OP is tangent theta. Since the slope is originally y over x, 
but it can be also changed to R sine theta over R cosine theta. And as you know, sine theta over cosine theta is equal to tangent theta. When the radius is 1, P is just equal to cosine theta comma sine theta. What we can also know from here is that both cosine and sine are positive, where theta is between 0 and pi over 2. And you can say P is located in the first quadrant, where theta is between 0 and pi over 2. Then how about the other quadrants? When P is located in the second quadrant, theta is between pi over 2 and pi. And since x is negative and y is positive in the second quadrant, cosine must be negative and sine positive. When p is located in the third quadrant, theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2. And since both x and y are negative in the third quadrant, both cosine and sine must be negative. Lastly, when p is located in the fourth quadrant, theta is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. And since x is positive and y is negative in the fourth quadrant, cosine must be positive and sine negative. How about tangent? Tangent is sine over cosine, and is also the slope of the line OP. So tangent must be positive in the first and third quadrant, and negative in second and fourth quadrant. So in the first quadrant, where theta is between 0 and pi over 2, all the trigonometries are positive. In the second quadrant, where theta is between pi over 2 and pi, sine is the positive only. In the third quadrant, where theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2, tangent is the positive only. In the fourth quadrant, where theta is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, cosine is the positive only. There are more properties and topics about trigonometry. The rest of them will be covered in the next video. Please hit like if you like my video today, and subscribe and set up an alarm if you want to study more about math with me. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.